So what is the worst mistake that you've ever made? And I don't mean a small mistake like taking the wrong directions or choosing the wrong dish at a restaurant or even the next boyfriend who maybe is you know, ill-suited as Taylor Swift sings. I mean a big, huge mistake. Something that you remember even for the rest of your life. Last year, before, just before Good Friday, I saw this tweet by former English footballer Chris Kamara who made a mistake about a mistake he made many years before that no one seems to have forgotten. He was the man on the ground on an English football game when one of the pundits on the studio crossed live to him. Now, it's actually quite funny, and I think we're going to be able to play what happened, and I'll show you what happened next as we see this big mistake that Chris Kamara made. And I'm sure that our technical guys here are going to get this exactly right. Any moment now. Oh. Anyway, well, I hope you appreciated what was going on there. That happened back in 2010. Uh, Chris Kamara made a mistake. He didn't see what was going on in the field. Someone got sent off. He didn't know what was happening. But then last year, 13 years later, someone reminded him of what happened. And so Chris Kamara tweeted, OK. So you make one mistake 13 years ago and no one will let you ever forget it. He made a very big public mistake, quite entertaining, but very embarrassing. And it's a big mistake that people just don't forget. Making mistakes is an unfortunate part of what it means to be human. As one of my favorite musicians, Billy Joel says, or sings, you're only human, you're supposed to make mistakes. But some of our mistakes are much more serious, far worse um, than even a public, big public one like the one that Chris Kamara made. These mistakes are so large, so significant that we just can't laugh it off. For the impact of these mistakes stays with us for years, stains us, affects us, haunts us. Maybe that new boyfriend really is a mistake, a serious, costly, emotionally damaging mistake. Maybe those toxic friends really did change you. Maybe that one cigarette, that one drink, that turned into another and another, and it became an addiction that we just couldn't stop. Or maybe that mistake ended up sending you to prison. Like this man I once met, John Rusnak who once made a colossal mistake. John worked as a currency trader with Allied Irish Bank based in Baltimore in the US. And he was a foreign currency trader and had pretty decent track record. And as he started at Allied Irish Bank, he believed that the Japanese yen would increase in value. And so he placed a large number of trades on the future price of the yen. But unfortunately, rather than increase in value, the, vet, the yen dropped, and so he started losing money. And so he tried trading his way out of the loss, except that didn't work, and his losses kept mounting. As his hole got deeper and his losses got bigger, he began taking bigger risks. He started hiding his trades. He entered false trades, and eventually he created a false identity to hide the money that he was trading. Eventually, he ran out of time. The bank caught up with him and discovered that he had made a staggering loss of $691 million. He had lost the bank $691 million through arrogance, deception and lies. Now that's a big mistake. John Rosnack went to prison for seven and a half years for fraud. Mistakes have consequences. Yes, we're only human, we're supposed to make mistakes, but John Rusnak's mistake sent him to prison. Our mistakes can hurt us, our mistakes can hurt others, our mistakes can haunt us, define us, and destroy us. They can't be erased 
because we can't change the past. And our mistakes can also separate us from our creator, from the God who made us. When we ignore him, reject him, fail to worship him as we ought, and we bring him shame. And God is justifiably angry at the human mistake of ignoring, rejecting, and shaming him. For mistakes have consequences. So what can we do? If mistakes can hurt, haunt, and can't be erased, how can we live? How can we live with ourselves? Well, we need forgiveness. It's a deep, powerful, and often overlooked human emotion and desire to be released from the consequences of our past. For forgiveness is the only way in which our mistakes can no longer define us and bring healing, reconciliation, and peace. We need forgiveness. Archbishop Desmond Tutu once said that forgiveness and reconciliation were the only viable alternatives to revenge, retribution, and reprisal. Without forgiveness, he said, there is no future. For forgiveness is the only solution to, our mis- to overcome our mistakes. And just recently, Billy Joel released another song, a brand new song, Turn the Lights Back On, which was released during the Grammys. It's a song which ruminates on the possibility of a repairing, repairing a flawed relationship, a song which reflects on the mistakes of the past. Billy sings, I was wrong, I forgot, I made mistakes. But the heart of the song is a longing for forgiveness. For it is only through forgiveness that reconciliation in our relationships is possible, that the mistakes of the past can be erased and can no longer haunt us. Yet forgiveness is becoming increasingly difficult in our, to find in our world, in a society obsessed with social media and trawling through people's past to find any hint of moral failure or suspicion In a godless world, there is no way for guilt or shame or mistakes to be removed. There is no possibility of redemption. And hence, so we must wear our own mistakes forever. And hence, it's become almost impossible in our world to find forgiveness. And we're at risk of having to spend the rest of our lives having to live with our worst mistake. Where can I find forgiveness? Is forgiveness even possible? Well, there is good news. For there is one particular day each year we remember when forgiveness came. One particular Friday, Good Friday, where the ultimate forgiveness from God came that enables forgiveness from all the mistakes that we've made, no matter how Colossal. And this forgiveness comes through the death of Jesus, which was just read to us before. For the death of Jesus wasn't just an ancient tragedy, a young and innocent man dying a criminal's death. It wasn't just a dramatic reading or even an inspiring story. No, it was through Jesus' death comes forgiveness for all who believe in him. As the Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 1, In him, Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. In him, in Jesus, there is redemption. There is the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness for our mistakes. How? What says there? Through his blood. Through Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross. Jesus' death was not purposeless, an accident, a tragedy, a mistake. It was deliberate. Jesus willingly died. He remained silent in the face of his accusers so that forgiveness, redemption 
the erasure of our mistakes is possible. It might seem strange to call the day where we remember the death of Jesus Good Friday, but it is good because it means forgiveness. There is blessing, release and peace for one who believes in him. Psalm 32 says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them and in whose spirit there is no deceit. The promises of this psalm are fulfilled in Jesus, in his death on that first Good Friday, whose death covers sin, forgives transgressions, and whose sins no longer count. Mistakes are erased. In Jesus, there is forgiveness, freedom, and peace from our worst mistakes. Even for someone like John Rosnack. For he was in prison, living the consequences of his mistakes. And whilst in prison, John Rosnack discovered this message afresh. For there he got a Bible. He read it. And he discovered the real meaning of forgiveness. That even though he had made a huge, huge mistake, even though he was not worthy, someone, namely Jesus, forgave him. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. For John, finding forgiveness in Jesus was a life-changing event. It enabled John to redefine who he was, no longer defined as a traitor, a smart kid, a rich kid, one who had been convicted of a crime, one who had made a big mistake. But he was redefined as forgiven, free, a follower of Jesus. And this transformed his life and how he treated others, enabling him to forgive others, even those he disagreed with. John found forgiveness in Jesus and Jesus alone, and there was no other way that he believed that he could ever find forgiveness. The ultimate forgiveness is found in Jesus. And this was made possible because of Jesus' death on that first Good Friday. Forgiveness for our mistakes, no matter how big or small our mistakes. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for that Good Friday also many years ago. We thank you that though Jesus, your great innocent servant, your Christ, suffered, was tortured, beaten and died a cruel, unjust death on a Roman cross, that though his death can be, but through his death, we can be cleansed, forgiven, made free and brought into relationship with you. For this we praise you. For your great wisdom and love expressed to us in Jesus Christ, we give you thanks. Help us to follow this great saviour of the world and to live for him as forgiven people. Amen. Just a reminder that this brings us to the end of our gathering today. There is going to be hot cross buns or some buns available through into the morning tea area here afterwards. There is also a retiring offering, an offering there for the Australian Baptist Easter offering which helps provide resources, training and encouragement to help, help Australian Baptists share Jesus. And also a reminder that the Easter Sunday service uh, is here at 10 a.m. Chinese congregation is here in the church and the English speaking is in the chapel. And please also, the pens, we're generous people, but the pens that you might have used, please, if you can return them um, uh, to Ray or just leave them on the chair or something and we'll collect them afterwards as well. Let's close in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us always to remember your great love for us in Jesus Christ, your Son. By the power of your Holy Spirit, fill us with joy, inspire us with courage, and provoke us to love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us for morning tea, and thank you for joining us on this special Good Friday Reflection.